assembling a high quality model steam plant. This is part 14, dismantling the duplex pump valve chest, looking at the baseboard and starting the steam piping. But in this episode, before I do anything, I'm going to fix this pump. It's 7.30 in the morning on Sunday the 1st of October 2017 and I'm in the workshop. Most people are in bed, but I'm in the workshop dismantling this pump. As before, I'm just removing the water chest cover to get at the valves that I cleaned up the other day. And these are still okay because I didn't add any more silicone rubber. This is well stuck down. I use a small craft knife and a hammer. And I must say that I'm being very careful. I'm trying to break the seal between the water chest and the main cylinder casting without doing any damage whatsoever. So why am I doing this job at 7.30 on a Sunday morning? It's because it's been playing on my mind. This is a beautifully made pump and I'm really not happy that it's not working properly. There was some water coming through it but it was coming through under duress. So there's no other way to do this but to repair it properly. The four small poppet valves that I've already removed are the top valves for the outlet. There are four inside this block and they will also be gummed up with this silicone rubber stuff. I really am being very gentle with this because if the hammer just slips and hits the wrong part or I hit it too hard then the pump is scrap. And thankfully the cover came off cleanly. Well, I'll use the term cleanly lightly, just look at this mess underneath here. That's the problem with silicone rubber. As it squeezes out around the edge, it also squeezes out around the inside edge. And look at this, the valves are firmly stuck down with lumps of silicone rubber. So now, without damaging the valves or the valve seatings, I have to remove all this silicone rubber. Some of them are large lumps, which initially will have not been where they are, but will have got washed into the valve area during the test run of the pump before the silicone rubber had properly cured. Slowly and carefully, piece by piece, I'm removing all the excess silicone rubber. And now it's time to see how tight the valves are, and they feel fairly tight, really. I'm not very happy about this. Ah, one of them's moving. And that must be the only valve that was letting any water into this pump in the first place. And that's why some water was dribbling into the tank via the bypass valve. I'm having to put quite a lot of pressure on this screwdriver to rotate these valves. They really are firmly stuck in these seats. And I'm still finding pieces of silicone rubber and it's very important to get rid of any part of this detritus. If a lump of this stuff finds its way into a hidden waterway, then there could be a problem, but I think we're lucky with this one. I'm going to continue scraping away all of the traces of this silicone rubber. I'm using my bench craft knife, and I call it the bench craft knife because it lives on the bench. It's not very sharp, it's quite blunt, so it doesn't dig lumps out of the metal. This one is stuck all the way down. These poppet valves have a piece that projects underneath them, and the silicone rubber has even got into that area. It's full of it. So by now you get the gist of what I'm doing. I remove the valve and clean away all the silicone rubber from around the valve. And what I'm going to do is relap the valve slightly, just using some T-cut. Nothing too abrasive. T-cut is not a very harsh abrasive. It's what they use on motor vehicles for cutting back the paint. So it's ideal for just cleaning up the valve seats. You don't need to use commercial grinding paste, that is a little bit too aggressive. It's the same sequence on all of the valves. Remove the valve, remove the silicone rubber from the valve, remove the silicone rubber from around the valve, clean up everywhere around the valve or anywhere near the valve, and then relap the valve in with some T-cut. Relapping valves like this is a very simple job, and normally you do not have to remove the water cylinder block. It really depends on the design of the pump. What I would normally do is remove the four top valves and then use a screwdriver through the holes to get at the bottom valves, apply some T-cut and then rotate the screwdriver. But you can't do it on this design because it has some valve limiters. These prevent the lower valves from lifting too much and they also prevent you from putting a screwdriver in to rotate the lower valves. So there's no choice really but to remove this piece. In any case, to do a job like this, removing silicone rubber sealant, it's best to remove this component in the first place, because there's also some silicon sealant down in the waterways between the cylinder and the main block. Originally, the engineering on this engine was so good, it didn't have any gaskets and didn't need them. 
There may have been one or two weeps. I mean, it's been running since 1995. It's not a new engine. One thing that's worth remembering is the valves have little pop marks on them. So each valve goes in a set place with a corresponding mark. I'm refitting the brass nuts to the studs on the water chest. I will be dismantling this again because I'm going to fit gaskets. But unfortunately the gasket material I have is a little bit thick for this job. Next time I go up to Blackgates I'll get some thinner stuff. Generally the comments on my channel are not too bad. I get some nutters and I get some people who are just nasty people. And one guy had a go at me for mentioning Blackgates engineering and generally advertising them. Please be aware, I will put on these videos whatever I want to put on them. And by way of a change, these are some mushrooms and toadstools growing around my railway track in the garden. And here are a few more of them, and these are growing on the lawn. Not something you see every day. That's enough of that. Back into the workshop, and the pump is now working fine. The water is running in one continuous stream, as you can see here. And when I put my finger over the end of the pipe, I cannot stop the pressure. As you can see, there's an awful lot of pressure coming out of this pipe now, and the pump isn't running very fast. This is how things are supposed to be. How it was, was unacceptable, and it wouldn't have got any better. The valves were firmly stuck in place by the silicone rubber. Fixing the pump like this is a bit above and beyond the call of duty, but I am assembling a high-quality steam plant, and I really couldn't put the pump into the steam plant with this amount of silicone rubber in it. And as you can see, there are one or two drips still around it, and I will be fixing those before I finish the steam plant. The pump seems much happier than it did. It's running very well indeed. There are some leaks around the steam side of this pump, so I'll probably have a look at those at the same time. It's best not to get too paranoid about small steam weeps from gaskets and things like that. It happens. What's concerning me about this, though, more than the pump, is this baseboard. I don't know what it's made out of. I spoke to the owner, and he said it was oak. What's really concerning me, though, is that it marks very easily. I've already applied some polyurethane varnish to this as well, but it makes no difference. It's a very strange kind of wood. This is the fitting on the inlet to the Twin Victoria, and I've just removed it as you can see, because I'm going to fit a globe valve to it to admit the steam to the engine. And how I decided to do this was to fit a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch nut to the fitting, and drill the nut and fitting 9 30 seconds of an inch, which is tapping size for 5 16 by 32. Here I'm tapping it, and when I put it together with Loctite 542 as usual, it will be very steam tight. Over now to the boiler fittings. I need to take a steam outlet from the tap on the top of the boiler, and I want it to look neat. I don't want it to stick out at right angles or anything. It needs to follow the contours of the boiler, and once it's finally bent into position, it will look good. This is an approximate fitting. It runs down underneath the boiler, where it's going to meet a T-piece, which will supply steam to the engine and to the duplex pump. I'll just put the condenser in place so you can see where it's going to be. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.